All right, welcome to Games You Should Know by Heart because you at home are so intelligent, you memorize lots of chess games, just like the people here. Now, what I did is I made the games as short as possible, okay? So the first game, white played e4 and black resigned. Can you remember that game? You should know that by heart, no? That's the game Rufus versus Doofus. No, I'm kidding. Okay, that's actually games that are played downstairs at the chess club. Okay, that's, that's as good as they can play. It's like E4, I didn't see it coming. All right, so uh, this, this lecture is going to be about two underrated players. One of them was the world champion. He's still underrated. Man, chess is hard. A world champion, you get no respect. Okay, the first one is Harry Nelson Pillsbury, your favorite player. Let's ask a random student, Arjun, have you heard of Harry Pillsbury? Okay, and what tournament did he win that you've heard of? Well, you've heard of the city of Budapest, but yeah, come on. You can't just say Budapest because it says Budapest up there. You think I'm that dumb? Don't answer that. All right, let's ask somebody intelligent in the audience. What famous tournament did Pillsbury win? I'll give you a hint if you don't know. It's the only one you heard of. No, never heard of nothing. Okay, it was, it was played in 1895. That was a good hint. Ugh. Okay, I'll give you another hint. It's where I got married the first time. Okay, I'll give you another hint. You, incorrect. No, but that's, you, I lived in Belgium. Okay, I'll give you another hint. There was a famous battle there in 1066. A smart audience you got here. What's that? Hastings. Hastings, yeah. Yeah, Hastings 1895 was a famous tournament. Everybody played. I've lectured about, I've shown cross tables from that tournament. Ugh. Okay, and the winner of that tournament was Pillsbury. Also playing were Lasker, Steinitz, and other good players. And there's a famous game from that tournament you all know, Steinitz versus? Ugh. Ugh. You were close. No, you weren't close. Steinitz versus von Bartleben. What? Does anybody know that game? Yeah, you know when the rook went to e7, then f7, then g7, then h7? No? I've shown that game like 80. Probably that was in like last week's class. Ugh. I would have put that game in, but I figured you'd know it. So I put in games I figured you didn't know, except for one, which I just like too much. So I put it anyway. So this is Pillsbury Winowar. And Winowar is the player you may have heard of from the Winowar variation of the French. No, nothing? All right, good job. OK, now. Unfortunately, players a long time ago played terrible, okay, which was good for Morphy. Okay, he just beat them up. Okay, they played like you, the best players in the world. Okay, man, what an insult to you and them. Wow, I insulted everybody. I like that. And occasionally somebody played good, like Morphy, and that was about it. However, Pillsbury was quite a good player, and he was the best player in the US for a long time. But you've only heard of Frank Marshall. So you're like Pillsbury, who's that? Okay, what's that? Who? No. Okay, now Pillsbury was white and he played d4 x clan. Winowar was black, preventing the Winowar French. Pretty good, huh? No, nothing. Okay. So they played a semi Slav, which I don't understand because this was the year 1896. How are they playing a semi Slav? What? What is this, 2017? What's happening over here? Now, Winowar played a variation that nobody good plays in the last 50 years, except recently deceased American Grandmaster. No, more recently than him. That was a good answer. Yeah, very good. The highest rated player in the room got the answer right. Uh, Arthur Bisguyer recently died, and when he was black in this variation, he played the way Winowar does here, but most people didn't do that. Most people in this position play the move, the most common move. Oh, you're making me look bad because he played bishop d6. That's the uncommon move. What's that? What? The highest traded player in the room is always giving the right answer? D takes c4 is every game ever played. There are no other games in chess, just this one. Okay? And then there's at least 8,000 Grandmaster games with that move. Okay? And every Grandmaster has played it. And I don't play the semi Slav, and I've still played it. And I'm not kidding. I only played it once, and I got crushed. All right, so actually, I played it twice and I won the second game. Forgot about that. Okay, so bishop d6, a Bisguyer specialty. Castles, castles. e4, rawr, the correct move. Everybody takes everything, a Bisguyer specialty. Take, 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 take. 
Now, I'm not a big fan of knight f6 because I like the knight on d7 because I think at some point black should play e5 or c5. I'm not sure what theory says, but I can't even understand theory. It speaks to like Russian or something. Okay, so knight f6 I'm not a fan of. The bishop just goes somewhere else and now it's harder to play c5 and e5. But, and also the knight can get pinned. So I, I don't like knight f6, but it's 1896, so I'm not gonna complain very much. Okay, h6, stopping bishop g5. h6 recommended by, who's the funniest, who can get it? Wow, there is a guy, who, yeah, Mike Hummer. Mike Hummer likes to play h6 when it loses a tempo and gets crushed, because he defends. Okay, that stops bishop g5. When Mike Hummer plays it, why does he play it, Arjun? No, it's actually another reason. Oh. Knight g5. Oh, I thought it was rook. It is, but he is afraid of knight g5. Like in the two knights, he's like, h6, I move three. Okay, and then people on the internet are like, Mike Cummer's the worst. I hate Mike Cummer. Okay, and I should stop doing that. I mean, wait a minute. All right, so Pillsbury played bishop e3, which in my opinion is the only move of the game that like nobody would play. Um, but it's not that bad. Every other move is like, is, you know, stockfish nine. Every other move is perfect. Okay, now bishop e3 has a very obvious reason why he played it. That pawn's defended twice and not attacked. Who? No. no, no, As I said earlier, it was about a minute ago, so you forgot. Black wants to play. Black wants to play. Black wants to play. I said it like a minute ago. You guys rewind and say what I, what's that? E5. Wants to play c5 or e5. That's why I don't like knight f6. I don't think he's playing e5. You guys might play e5, but don't, don't do it. But c5 makes a lot of sense because you want to get rid of the center pawn. And eventually, this bishop is very suspicious. So if you could cheat, you would play b6, bishop b7, c5. And you would be equal or even better. So bishop e3 makes c5 less good. So I think that's why he played bishop e3. All right, it's all right. Okay, rook e8, ugh, rook e8, man. Ugh. That's why Winowar never, never knew the price of tea in China, because he played rook e8. No, nothing? Man, smart audience today. Okay, so queen d3, so you guys are all happy, right? Bishop c2, queen d3? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are like, all right, finally. Queen c7, now, because he played queen c7, he's sort of ready for, he's ready for everything. So what move did white make that stops c5 and e5? Wow, what a good player. You guys hear crickets at home? What's that? H3? Who? H3? Does that stop either one? Did you say queen c3? Yeah. You didn't stop either one. Well, I said stop them both. Come on, man. I'm going to change your name to Arjun with an E. If you don't want him to play c5, you got to do it yourself. C5. c5, right. Now, yeah, bishop f8 because? Always play bishop f8. Always play bishop f8. Knight e5. Man, he's looking like a good player. This looks like a modern game. It doesn't look like 1800s. There's no king's gambit. There's no sacking five pieces. There's white getting a positional edge and squeezing him. That's why Pillsbury was great. Okay, bishop takes c5 because it is 1896, so it's all tactics. Okay, now, if bishop takes c5 was a good move, that means knight e5 is a bad move. Very insulting to the opponent. And you guys see why he played bishop takes c5. Yeah. Okay, because the pawn on d4 is doing too much. Okay, now, as my son and I like to say, uh, Pillsbury gave him the sugar me do. If you watch The Simpsons every episode ever, you'll get that. Okay, and he may, if you thought bishop c5 was a good tactic, you're going to like this move a lot more. You with the right answer. Ugh. Oh, why'd you make me look bad? No. No, no. Ugh. Oh, oh, nobody finds Pillsbury's move. Pillsbury was actually good. The other players in the 1800s, I have no comment. Okay, Morphy was good. Lasker was good. Sometimes Steinitz was good. Sometimes he was not good. Who? Didn't somebody say that? I don't understand knight g4. Somebody explain it to me. So I take it? 
what, English, what? King, King F8. Knight G4, you lose a knight, I take it. Now I'm threatening Queen H2 mate. All right, so you all played Sacrifices, but not the one that he played. That's why we're lecturing about him. These are games you should memorize. God, that was funny. So somebody said it, but I couldn't hear him. Bam! That's what you're going to play, Arjun? No. Why not? It's too good? Don't play Bishop H6. It's too exciting. It's a Futurama joke. Only Spencer could get it, and Lulu. Okay, so... Uh, I'm guessing if you take it, what did he do, something crazy? He took that. If you take it, I have no idea what I would do, but I know what I would do. I would play queen check, and then I would win your queen next move. Anybody agree with me? I do. Okay, you do. So the king has two legal moves. For those of you who think h7 is legal, it's not. And then I would play knight g6 check, and I would take your queen. Okay, Pillsbury was good. All right, so if you can't take the bishop, and I'm going to play queen g3 next move anyway, he took this on d4. Queen d4, gh6, queen f4. A queen f4 was a really good move. Now I want to play my queen g3 check and my other check again, and I want to take your knight. Okay, now you remember in other lectures and in other games, we were talking about a free attack and all that kind of stuff. Did white sacrifice five pieces? No, white sacrificed a pawn, and black has this good defense of his king. Oh, terrible, right? Yeah. So basically, white sacrificed almost nothing, and he has this monster attack with all his pieces. Okay, but I'm sure black can defend. Okay, so knight d5, attacking this queen and defending that queen. That's why that guy has an opening named after him. See, he's not bad. Queen takes h6. Now, most of you would take the knight. And then how would white win? Other, other than, you know, the guy who obviously knows. You obviously know, too. Give them a chance. Yeah. Is that right, Ar is that right Arjun? Yeah. Bishop h7. That's the only legal move. Bishop g6. That's, now, if I was white, I would go here, because that's, you know, I like to torture him a little. But, okay, check, and then mate. And if you do puzzles online, this, this is a very common theme that they like to do. Bishop eight, yeah. Okay, so you'll see that a lot. Okay, so Winowar didn't fall for that. So after queen h6, he didn't play queen takes knight. However, white has a lot of threats here. White has like 700 pieces attacking the black king. And material is equal. Okay, so he played f6, breaking my rule. Never play f6. But... His queen's defending h7, and his pawn's attacking the knight. Now, this was shocking to me. It really is. I'm, I'm, I'm like, usually I'm kidding, but I'm not kidding. I'll be kidding the next thing I say. Uh, Pillsbury played a really interesting move here that was really exciting. And I was like, that can't be the best move. This is 1896. So I turned the engine on, and it's the best move. It took the engine a while to find it. So Pillsbury was good, and Morphe, and that was it. Okay, so this is a really, I like this move a lot. I thought it was a good move, but I said it can't be the best. Those guys didn't play the best moves back then. So this move does several things. Black wants to play pawn takes knight, and white wants to get more pieces into the attack. So it actually prevents f takes e5, and it threatens to get more pieces into the attack. It's an aggressive move. I'll give you a lot of hints, I'm trying. Probably not enough hints. Right, that's right. It is one of them, yeah. Yeah, he played f4. I'm like, f4, that can't be the best move, but it was. So now if white could cheat, he would probably do that. And then I would like white. Okay, and if black takes, we can throw this check in, threatening the rook. So you would defend your rook, and then now you're like, oh, f4, I like that move now. What do you think, Arjun? Arjun's like, I, I will, I'll take white. Yeah. Yeah, now the smackdown and the beatdown are coming. So a lot of stuff's coming. Okay, so Winowar didn't like any of that. So he played rook e7. And the game ended in one move. I guess Pillsbury was good. Right? And then he played a move and black resigned. And resigning was the best move according to the engine.
And I talk about this with my private students. It's very important in chess that you defend the back rank. That way you don't get back rank mated. And black just undefended the back rank. See, I gave the answer away. I'm such a nice guy. Anybody? Ben Simon? Uh, ben Simon's all over that. Yeah. Now we're threatening queen f8 and queen h8. The, the truth hurts. However, black got a, did a good job developing these pieces. I think the computer announces like really quick mate here. I guess I could play queen b6 check and queen g1 check, you know, avoiding mate. Yeah, otherwise mate's really quick, right? So that's one of my favorite games because I never saw it before today. And I was like, wow, Pillsbury was good. Now I'm from Michigan, as you know. I mean, you know it now. You knew it for obvious reasons. And there's a guy in Michigan you've never heard of named Nick Pope. He's, I don't know, B player? I actually don't know, I think he's a B player. And he wrote a book on Pillsbury. So if you wanna buy a book on Pillsbury, he has a whole book on Pillsbury, good book. Um, and basically, when people think of top American players, they think Frank Marshall. And a lot of people don't know about Pillsbury, and some of them know about Showalter. We have a show of hands about Showalter. You've heard of Showalter? That's it? What about you, you're a master? Yeah. He's like, Showalter, what are you talking about? Showalter was like, you know, top 20 in the world. He was like number two or three in America for forever. Oh, I'm furious. Anyway, he was no Pillsbury, but you know, that takes the cake. Okay, so Pillsbury was good, and he was an underrated player. People at the time knew how good he was. He won Hastings 1895. He was the best player in America. But people today are like, come on, that was over 100 years ago. Give me a break. You heard Alaska, you heard Steinitz. Come on, give, give me a break. Lasker and Steinitz came in like fifth and seventh in Hastings and Pillsbury won. So I don't want to hear any of it. Okay, now the next two games are by the same player and he was a world champion and he's underrated. He's mainly underrated in this country. I'll tell you how underrated he is. I'm shaking my head because it happened last week. I'm like ashamed to be an American. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I'm teaching a chess camp, the advanced camp, uh, you can delete that if any of the parents are watching. And I said, you know, which world champion, blah, 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 American world champion, American world champion, Bobby Fischer. And I'm like, right. And there were 23 kids in the camp. And I said, whom did he beat to become world champion? And then they guessed for like an hour and the class ended. They were like, you know, Kasparov? I heard, the first answer was Morphe. That was the first answer. The second answer was Kasparov. Then they just started naming random people. They were like, you, Ben Simon, you know, I don't know. Me, okay, some kids like me. I'm like, not you, okay. Then they were like, you know, the server over there. I'm like, I don't know, okay. And then when I said Boris Spassky, there was these little, really loud crickets. And I was like, well, how'd they get in here? And I think one kid heard of Spassky out of like the 23. I was furious because Spassky in the U.S. is known as the guy who lost to Fisher. Like, yeah, Fisher beat him. Okay, so we'll ask Arjun, who's laughing, whom did Spassky beat to become world champion? Ooh, he's like, wait, ask somebody else. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you heard of him? Yeah, there you go. Right, you heard of Petrosian, but not Spassky. No, you heard of Spassky. Okay, so coincidentally, when I was looking at games to memorize, I was looking at, at Spassky games because Spassky was good. And this is a famous game, you all know it. And you can memorize it because it's short. That's like your only hope. And this is against Bent Larson. And this is a very funny story. As you all know, that means they don't know, in the USSR back there against the rest of the world, they had a match in 1970. And the top two boards for the rest of the world were you. In 1970? They must have dug them up. Yeah. Uh, anybody else want a real answer? What's that? Larson and Fisher. And in 1970, Fisher was better than Larson. Fisher was always better than Larson. Maybe when Fisher was like 12, Larson was better. Probably. Yeah. Once Fisher was 15 or 16, no. Then probably Fisher, well. 
Definitely a 20 Fisher was better. Between 15 and 20 is arguable. Okay, but a 1970, like Fisher won like a thousand games in a row against everybody, so ridiculous. I know it was 71, don't give me any of that. So Larson said, I want to be board one. Rawr. And Fisher said, okay. What? Fisher was the craziest person who ever lived. And he was like, yeah, you can be board one. Okay, and this was one of the games he played on board one. Now you're gonna see who was better, Larson or Fisher. And it wasn't Larson. Now Larson actually did well on board one. So, but this was the game he didn't do well. Yeah. So this is the famous game because I'll show you a position and I'll tell you something really funny about it. Okay, so Larson played B3 and I play B3 occasionally. And I'm like, oh, I play B3 and so does Larson. I'll look at Larson's games and I'll play like him. But then I looked at Larson's games and I'm like, I'm not playing like him. Played B3, but he was always like lost in the first 10 moves that he went anyway. And I was like, all right, I can't play like that. Okay, Spassky plays E5 because he's Spassky. He always plays in the center. Develops a different piece every move. Knight F3 is a weird move. Okay, E4. And resigns. Okay, so you remember that game? Games to memorize. Yeah. All right, Knight D4. Spassky develops another piece. Amazing. Knight C6. Takes. E3. Bishop f5. How come we're like on move seven and black has all his pieces out and his opponent has one? What? This, what? I'm so furious. Okay, queen c2, which I would never even think of. That was like the game I showed in the last class, not this one. And then white played queen c2, I was making fun of it. Very similar to this. Although that guy won. That guy's better than I thought. Okay, queen e7, because we're going to castle long. And he castled long. So we're on move nine, and Black did everything. Whatever I teach you to do in the opening, Black did all of it. Okay, Castle, got all his pieces out, has space in the center, has a rook on an open file, and White did nothing. White should be ashamed of himself. Game's almost over, so don't blink. Okay, Larson lost more time, because he's not enough behind in development yet. He's got to lose some more time. So he played F4. Boo! Okay, weakening everything. Horrible. Okay, that's the losing move. Knight g4. And now, if it was black's move, I think every sacrifice on e3 wins. I think queen h4 wins. So he played g3, which does stop queen h4. I'll give him that. And it allows h5 with the idea of? Right, unless you're Isaac, then you move your h pawn, then you forget about it. That was the last class, but you might have missed it. It's also the A file, but you know, it's Canadian. So. Okay, so H5 to play H4. And Larson played H3 and said, you can't play H4. Showed him, right? Taught him a good lesson. So Black played H4. Yeah. It's funny, H3 makes H4 stronger, but it does sack a piece. But White has good development. I mean, no development. That's what I meant. And now, Larson surprised everybody by castling kingside. No. Arjun's like, wait a minute, uh, I know you're kidding now. All right, so you take a piece, because that's what Yasser said. If you're going to get mated, might as well be a piece up. Okay, takes. Threatening rook takes h1 with advantage. So rook g1, yeah. So in this position, um, I showed it to one of my students, and he looked at it for an hour, which was great because I get paid by the hour. I get paid by the hour, but yeah, you said the line. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay, and at the end of looking, when he couldn't find the answer, he said, "Well, I know it's not this move." Then now, then he's right. Yeah, he said it's definitely not that move. And I'm like, right, that's the move. Yeah. That's why Spassky was better than him. He was some guy getting a lesson, and Spassky was some guy being the world champion. So what move is it not? Is it not rook h1? It's, it's not rook h1, right. And my student suggested every legal rook move on the h file and said, well, it's not rook h1. And I said, that's right, rook h1. And he was like 1900, and he's like, what? Rook h1? Yeah. Yeah, when your opponent plays rook h1, and he's the world champion, you're like, man, this isn't going well for me. Yeah. Now you guys see the threat. Yeah. 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 Good job. 
Okay, and Spaz and Larson played the move you wouldn't play. Oh wait, he did that next move? I'm supposed to memorize these games, but I forgot. Maybe he just took. Yeah, he took. Yeah, he took. Okay, and after the obvious move, G2. Now he played a funny move, though, Larson. I thought it was funny. I mean, you could resign, because you can't let the guy play. Pl now he castles. Now. Okay, you can edit that out, because I'm. Yeah. All right, so you can't move the rook vertically, because G1 queen is good. And he played the funny move, rook F1. Because he tried to castle, but it was illegal, so he had to play rook f1. Right, Arjun? OK, so if he plays rook g1, which is a little more obvious, okay, then what does black do? OK, then this is legal. I wasn't going to play queen h1. I was going to play queen f2, but your move's better. So yeah, I agree with that kid. Yeah. And what do I like to say? The truth hurts. Yeah. I mean, if I was white here, the truth would hurt. I'd be like, I guess Spassky's better than me. Maybe Fisher should have played board one. OK. So he played rook f1, queen h4, king d1, g takes equals queen. And now Larson broke the most important rule. Right. But what should he have done? Always play bishop f1, but he resigned. If he takes, then bishop g4 check. And then maybe he was right to break my rule. Because yeah. if bishop e2, checkmate with advantage. And this is even worse. Exactly. I think this is worse, right? So remember, he played board one over Fisher. OK, now I have a funny story about Larson, because a lot of people have funny stories about Larson. Uh, my good friend Grisha. Who's Grisha? Anybody? Come on, you know. Grisha. Just Grisha. Lives in Kentucky. Good, good hint. Kaidanov. Yeah. So Kaidanov told me once, when we were working together, he's like, oh man, Larson's great. I want to play like Larson. This was before I met him. So he looked at all of Larson's games, and he tried to play like Larson. Then when he kept losing all of his games, he stopped. Okay. Now, that was like the worst game ever, but Larson had very interesting games, and playing interesting is difficult. I know you guys try to do it, but you see how you do. So, yeah. And when Larson played interesting and won, that was really cool. Okay. But when he lost, it wasn't cool. The game I've never seen before is a game when Spassky was a junior. Okay, this is in a junior tournament in Leningrad, okay, which no longer exists, but I don't care. Okay, if you want to go to Leningrad, go to Florida and go to St. Petersburg, play shuffleboard. Right, Arjun? Yeah, but also if you want to go to Leningrad, that exists in Leningrad. Ugh. <laughs> There's two things I hate in this world. Yeah. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Leningrad Dutch. <laughs> well, you don't get that. Why are you laughing? I okay, I know you got it. Yeah. If Arjun got it, we're all in trouble. OK, so this is Spassky's white. And he's playing Rufus or Doofus, I don't know. Avtananov, that's a cool name, though. You got to give him that. OK, so Spassky's white, d4, just like in our first game, d5. D, Queen's Gambit accepted, amazing, 1949. OK, and you know, this game looks like I'm white, except white played great. But otherwise, it looks like the way I would play. This is exactly how I would play. Okay. Now, if this game was played today, they would trade on c5 and draw every game. It doesn't matter who's playing. Carlson, Geary, Anand, Caruana, and they would be begging each other for a draw, and the arbiter would say, you're not allowed to draw, and they would start crying, and finally they get to king versus king, then they would beg the arbiter for a draw, and he'd be like, all right, it's king versus king. Okay, that's what they do today. But this was 1949. Spassky didn't take no smack. So he didn't play dc5 and trade the queens. That's what they do now because they don't want to win. Okay, drawing is better, I guess. I don't know. Okay, or I guess in Carlson's case, losing. Okay. Man, Carlson, Caruana, man, a bunch of losers. All right, make sure you leave that in. Okay, so he played queen e2, no queen trade. I can't have a memorable game if we have a 90 move draw and a queen. You know. okay. So b5, Spassky saw his bishop was attacked. Knight c6, which is. 
probably inaccurate. Knight c3 takes. Rook d1 pinning the pawn. Usually in such positions, black plays d3 because that avoids what happened later. Although normally after b5, we're not playing knight c6 so early because we want to fianca to our bishop. That's why we played b5. Then the knight's blocking it. So, and also castling is good. I can prove it. White castled. Okay, and, and over in that other room in the advanced camp taught by that gentleman over there, okay, he's like, look, that guy castled and that guy didn't. It's probably Greg who did that lecture, but same thing. And then when the guy didn't castle, the kids were like, ooh, let him castle, then we can draw. Okay, and Greg's like, no, let's mate him when he didn't castle. And the kids are like, all right. <sighs> now the funny thing is, when you look at super GM games, you're like, how come the guy didn't get mated in 12 moves? Because they castle, and when the guy's going to mate him, they stop it. But in junior games, when you haven't heard of one of the players, and one of the guys is the greatest genius ever, now it's like Morphe versus Doofus. Now, as you all know, and probably one of you knows it, there was a game played in that room last year between Wesley So and Gary Kasparov. And it was a blitz game, right? You know the game I'm talking about? And Wesley sacked all his pieces and crushed Kasparov. And after the game, they said, dude, what was that all about? And Kasparov said, that was like Morphe versus amateur, and I was the amateur. Okay? And so this is also going to be like Morphe amateur, except it's going to be Spassky amateur. All right. So bishop b7, not playing d3. He takes d4. White has an isolated pawn, so he resigned because those are weak. Okay, did black castle yet? Is black's e pawn pinned? So maybe bishop e7? But I could still play d5, right? So black prevented d5. That prevents d5, but it's not good. Yeah. So he played the obvious way to prevent it. It defends d5 7,000 times. Same thing, but better. Yeah, knight b4. Knight e7 blocks your bishop, so then you're never going to cast it. Right. So now that black prevented d5, Spassky played. Why is the highest traded player always right? Yeah, d d5. Yeah. And also, I gave a lecture once where I showed Karpov games where he kept losing in this opening where white played d5. I have three Karpov games where his opponents played d5 in the first 20 moves, and he was dead lost. He actually drew one of them. Yeah. Yeah, Smyslav Karpov. Right. Yeah, very good. Yeah. How come a highest traded player knows everything? All right. So d5, and even if it's not good, it's still good. Write that down. Because you see this king is here, so it's good. Yeah. Okay. And Spassky gets no credit. You just know him for losing to Fisher. You don't know these other games. And when Fisher made his top 10 list of all time, he put Spassky on it. Okay, because, you know, Carlson and Kasparov and Karpov weren't good yet. So, I mean, is that why? Yeah. Okay, so he took on d5, bishop g5. Now all of black's pieces are pinned, just what you want when you haven't castled. Right, Arjun? Yeah. So now if it was white's move, every move wins a piece. Bishop d5, knight d5, and bishop f6 all win a piece. True story. Okay. So bishop e7 is the obvious move. You unpin and you threaten to castle. Bishop f6. Which way did he take? Let's see how smart the class is. With the knight? With the knight? With the knight? Your knight's pinned. You're giving your queen away? That's not a game to memorize. That's a game to laugh at. Knight takes, rook takes, queen. That's not the Leningrad junior. That's the St. Louis archbishop's junior. OK. So bishop takes also loses a piece, because I just told you it did like last move. So Because then there's a pin. Bishop takes f6. Your, your, your e pawn's pinned. So you can't, you can't do that. OK, so he played. Yeah, g takes, yeah. Takes, 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 takes. And black has a great pawn structure. OK, now this reminds you of the game I mentioned earlier that none of you knew. That guy knows because he's good. The guy who walked and you don't know, it's higher rated than me. No, not you. 
Okay, and the game I'm talking about, obviously, which reminds you of this position, is Steinitz von Bartleben. That was the game we talked about earlier, and you guys are like, what are you talking about? That was the game where Steinitz played Rook E7, Rook F7, Rook G7, Rook H7, and then his opponent left. I think he had to go to the bathroom, I don't know. And in that game, earlier in the game, Steinitz played the brilliant pawn sacrifice D5 because his pawn was on D4. And he wanted to play the move. When he played D5, his pawn was on D4 because he wanted to play. He couldn't play it because his pawn was on D4. But now he could play. Yeah. He wanted to play knight D4, but he couldn't because his pawn was there. So he played d5, then he played knight d4. I wonder if Spassky knew that game. Steinitz von Bartleben, what do you think? Of course. OK, now white's threatening everything. Knight c6, and my favorite move, knife f5. And castles makes knight c6 really strong, if you see what I'm saying. OK, so he didn't castle. But if you don't do anything, I'll play rook e1 and knight f5 and knight c6, and you'll super resign. So he broke the pin and played king f8. Now black's fine because he broke the pin. Okay. Knight f5, aka knife f5. Okay, now one of my favorite themes, which none of you have ever done, but I did it a lot in my game with Fidel Carrales Jimenez. I'm sorry I said it so bad, I apologize. Okay and is the overworked theme. And I had to give a lesson today and do two lectures, so I know overworked, right? You too, right, Arjun? Yeah. Okay, and you can see which piece is overworked here. The black queen, the only black piece that's doing anything. It's defending this red guy and this red guy. The reason they're red is soon black is gonna be embarrassed. Okay, so black played h5 with the winning attack, okay? Now, he didn't do it to attack. He did it because he was afraid of queen g4. He was afraid of queen h5. He was afraid my queen was gonna go to h6 in a weird diagonal way. And he played h5 and said, okay, I stopped all that. I stopped queen g4 forever. I stopped queen h5 forever. I stopped queen h6 forever. And then Spassi said, dude, nobody's heard of you. And I'm gonna tell you why now. And he played. I told you what the answer was like 10 seconds ago. Yeah, rook takes d5. Yeah, and the black queen is overworked. Okay, so again, the Astor Sarawan theory, if you're gonna get mated, might as well take everything. Then you're up some material. They took, queen e7. You guys can find the right move here. Actually, they can, Armin. Yeah. By the way, in my camp last week, half the kids would say king g7. The other half would say rookie eight. Why are you laughing when it's true? You know it's true. All right, so king g8. And white played the obvious move. Yeah. Now white has some threats, such as knight e7 and queen g7. Although if I was white, I would play h3 to give myself some lift. Although h4 is more accurate. Yeah, h4 is probably better. It, it, it fixes the h pawn on h5. Those are important considerations when you're a GM. All right, now this is what's funny. Um, it's hard to stop queen g7. Man, I think the engine would either go here or here. I think those are the engine moves. Yeah, and the other way to stop queen g7 mate is? Rook h7. Yeah, but that's, that's not good. Right, and probably I missed something better. See, I, see, I told you. Yeah, you don't see King G8. No, Queen F5 instead. Queen F5 instead? Oh, oh, you're saying in this position, Queen F. Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, I'm often not a queen down, so I can't play these positions too well. Yeah. Okay, so that, I agree. Queen F5 is best. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So instead of Queen F5, Black played. Yeah. And actually, he was playing Isaac, and Isaac's like, did I mate him? That's the reverse of what happened. Anyway, those are games to memorize because they're not very long, and they're really good. Right. So I hope you learned a lot. What you should have learned was Pillsbury's great. You never heard of him, so I'm mad at you. And Spassky was better than you thought. 
See, you thought he just lost to Fisher, but he did something else. Not sure what it was. Mm -hmm.